Welcome to Artmind. Today we are learning the color replacement tool in Photoshop. The color replacement tool is stacked under the brush tool. To give you a sense of what it does, I'm going to turn these orange eyeballs to green. For that, I've already picked a green color on the foreground. So now if I take my brush and paint, it gradually converts to green. Now let's go through the various options of the color replacement tool. The options under this button is same as that of the brush tool, so I'm not going to go into that. Instead, I'm going to start with mode. Let's look at hue. This hue option will only affect the hue of this image, meaning it won't affect the saturation or the brightness of the image. So suppose I want to change this blue hue to red. For that, we just need to select the red color on the foreground, which I already have. And then we simply paint over the blue. You can very well see that it is retaining the saturation and brightness of the blue color. It's just changing the blue hue to red. We'll move on to the next mode, which is saturation. Saturation will only affect the saturation of this image, leaving its hue and brightness intact. Next, we have color. Color affects both the hue and saturation of the image, but it doesn't touch the brightness value. So if we can have a comparison, this was with hue and this is with color. Next, we have luminosity, which affects only the brightness or lightness of the image. So you can see that the hue and saturation are totally untouched. Let's have a side-by-side -side look of all four of them. Next, we are going to take a look at sampling. The mode is kept at hue for this example. I'm going to begin with sample once. Also, we are using the blue color this time. Now, if I take my brush and click on this green capsicum, it's going to sample the color which is underneath this crosshair. And what is the color underneath? green right so now photoshop is going to assume that we want to convert only the green hues into blue so without letting go of the mouse button if i keep on dragging you can see that it's only painting the green capsicum it's not coloring the yellow or the red next we'll have a look at continuous sampling this time it's not going to sample just once instead it's going to keep on sampling continuously as it goes at this point, it's sampling the green, so it's turning the green to blue. But then if I move to yellow, it's now sampling yellow. And that's why the yellow hue is converted to blue. And now it's sampling red, so the red is also blue now. Last, we have sample background swatch. This gives you another way of telling Photoshop which color you want to target. Suppose I want to target the yellow color with blue hue. So I'll go to the background swatch and then sample this yellow color. So now our background swatch has the color which we want to target and the foreground color, blue, is the one which we want to use. So now if I take my brush and start painting, it's not going to paint the green capsicum. It's only going to paint the yellow capsicum. So no change of hue in the red as well. Next, we are going to talk about limits. I'm going to begin with contiguous. And also for this example, I'm using hue. I want to convert these blue regions to pink. I've already selected the color in the foreground. So now let's paint. You can see that these blue boxes are not continuous. They are demarcated by these black lines, right? So this is our sampling crosshair. I'm going to gently move it to the edge so that the crosshair and part of the brush remains in this box and part of it remains in the box which is separated. We all know that Photoshop is going to sample the color from underneath here. And what is the sampled color? Blue, right? We have a continuous stretch of blue from this point in this direction. But this continuity is hindered here. So since contiguous is set as our limit, Photoshop is only going to paint the continuous regions and not the disjointed parts. I'll paint and try this out. So this part turned pink, but not this region. Likewise, if I go below and hover the brush over this line, the same thing is gonna happen. It's not coloring the part which is not contiguous. Same if I take the brush to the left. Next, we're gonna see discontiguous. With discontiguous, Photoshop is very liberal. It's gonna paint both the contiguous segment and the discontiguous segment. So if I click and paint, we get both of them turning pink. Same if I go below and to the left. 
Next, we have find ages for which I'm using this example. We are going to learn find ages in conjunction with any of these two options. I'm going to use contiguous. And as usual, we have hue as the mode and blue as the foreground color. Now, as I try to convert the hue of the red chili to blue, you can see it's bleeding outside where we don't want it. Let's try find ages. What it's going to do is that it's going to find this age and then prevent the paint from going outside. Next, we have tolerance. I'm going to explain tolerance by using sample ones. First, we'll try a low tolerance value. 19 looks okay. And our foreground color is blue. You can see that we have a range of colors from left to right. I'm going to sample this color over here. And I'm hoping that since the color over here is similar to this one, it's going to be painted with blue. Let's check that. Yes, it does paint. But is it also going to tolerate this color given the tolerance is very low at 19? Let's keep moving and find out. So it won't tolerate or include this color within the sampling range of 19%. Let's keep moving. So this color is also beyond the range of 19% tolerance. You can see that this part is painted blue, so this color is within range of tolerance. I'm going to increase tolerance all the way to 100. Now it's going to include more colors within the sampling range. This is our color sample. And now as I move the brush, all the colors are included and painted with blue. Next we have anti-alias. First I'm going to paint without using anti-alias. The mode is hue, blue is our color and this is our image. I'm going to make a stroke on this bonnet. I'm going to zoom in. And you can see that the edge is serrated or rough. Now let's check anti-alias. The edge is now smooth. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.